Hey, y'all. Out here at uh, my buddy Jack's house. He's the one that's got the uh, 32 High Boy with a Nissan motor in it. And uh, he's got a new project that I think y'all be interested in. I'm surely interested in. He's been uh, so kind to invite me out here. And uh, we're going to gonna be able to follow this one through from where he's got it now um, all the way through it being finished. So it should be a pretty cool uh, set of videos. Jack, how are you, brother? Man, I'm doing great. Good. Who Tell me. be doing great on a day like this working on a hot rod? I am. Working on a hot rod, period, even if it's raining, makes it a good day, right? Yes, sir. Tell me a little bit about your hot rod. What is it? Well, for those who have seen, are familiar with Rats Glass Speed Star, it's a stylized version of a 3334. Um, it's, it's, Henry Ford never made this car exactly. It's a little bit lower, a little bit wider than a stock 33. And I started with one of his bodies that's a, that was a pure roadster. Oh, okay. No top at all. And I done something a little bit different to it. I'm putting a full drop top convertible on it. Right. I've seen these as hard tops, but I don't think I've ever seen one as a convertible, to be honest with you. Yeah, right. Now, I've, I have seen them, too, as roadsters, obviously. And there's a picture on the wall you can see back there, folks. So, you don't, no, you've probably seen one like that, too. But I don't think I've ever seen one that's, uh, that's a convertible. It'll be one of a kind. Like, uh, to your point, they make a 3-1 to coupe, Rats does, and a pure roadster with no body. But... To make this work, we uh, cut this section of the body out by the, behind the cockpit, and it's motorized, or will be motorized, and it opens up like this, and then folds back, and of course the top then will fold completely back into the to the back part of the cockpit. Will it be a power top, or will it be manual? The top is manual, but the tonneau cover is power. Okay. I've got the cool. screwdriver, I just don't have it installed right now, so then it, it folds back in, this will come back down, cover everything up. And you never know it's a convertible. Cool. And then you've had to do some real modifications in here, too, to make all that work. Yeah, when it started cutting the tonneau, the, this part of the, of the body out, uh, it lost all of its structure and integrity, the body did, because it had a lot of steel bracing in it. So it had to be all cut out and rebraced to make sure that the B pillars were stout enough to withhold the, the top. And, of course, the doors, when they open up, right. it have a tendency to sag since they're rear hinge. So, right. yeah, there's a lot of metal work went on inside here as well. So and, these uh, these will be uh, um, suicide doors. They are suicide doors. Yes. Yeah, cool. The other thing too is the the trunk lid. Right. I lost all the room for the normal truck hinges, all right. so I had to go to an after or excuse me a uh, an OEM. This is a hinge off of an Altima coupe. It's very similar to a Mustang. Right. Because because then the the, the top o the the trunk opens up and away and doesn't interfere with oh, this one. Oh, I see. Cool. And they they're going to bolt right to there. Right. Now, are you uh, you got an engineering background or anything? No, I'm just a gearhead. Just uh, wow. you know, it's kind of like cooking. You read a book, you put some ingredients together, and <laughs> it's you come like out cooking. with a souffle. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, you come out with a souffle. I don't know if that's what they call it, but surely you do all this in a big shop, right? Now this is my garage. You do this in your. I got a car stuck here in the middle. My wife's car is usually over there. Wow. And uh, it's a little tight, but it works. Folks, that should motivate anybody out there that thinks that you gotta you got to have a big shop and some fancy tools and all that stuff to make a hot rod. Jack's proven that all you got to have is desire. I mean, um, like he said, it's just nothing more than making a souffle. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So you can probably tell this whole, the whole, well, this was after the top frame off of a Miata, Mazda Miata. Oh, okay. It, it closely resembled the size of the cockpit, but it had to be quartered this way and this way and completely changed up to match. This whole front header has been changed up, as you probably can imagine. But it all still, you know, it all still works. Yeah, when, yeah, it goes, yeah, when it yeah. goes all the way in, it's going to look like a, a roadster. But we'll have uh, power, power windows. And okay. We'll that anyway, and air conditioning. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, air you know, conditioning. the yellow car in the rain. Right, right. Got tired of getting caught in the rain. Right, right. And then what have you done here? It looks like you've added something onto the corner here. Well, I want kind of the signature of this car, of the Speedstar, is the raked windshield that's laid in. Okay. You know, and, and I didn't want to, uh, to change that line because that's, that's kind of a signature. So, so I compromised, and I'm going to make the eight pillars the same width all the way up. And that gives the top a little bit more width. To uh, a little bit more width to match up with. Oh, I so got I you. Okay, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. I see. So I didn't have to change the rake. And then you're gonna you're gonna smooth all this stuff out and everything. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, Holy finished, smoke. Perfect covered. Wow. You know how it looks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw your other one. Yeah, I know. I know you got an intention for detailing, and you're gonna do it right. That's for sure. 
Can I put one of this thing in about the front end? Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Let me stand back so you can so you all can see what he's getting ready to show you. Again, the Speed Star is a stylized 33-34, and this is the this is the grill that comes with the with the body, and it's you know typically a flat laid back grill. Right. I wanted to do something a little bit different, like the rendering, and so I've, I've fabricated a it looks kind of like a 37 grill. Right. Except, except it's of course made specifically for this body, and then the hood normally stops right here. So that was extended to cover over the uh, holy smokes to cover over the uh, the grill, and the grill is made up of 28 individual quarter inch steel bars. Wow! Cut on the bandsaw. And you cut all those out and did all the figuring and everything because they're not all yeah. the same size, right? No, they're no. not the same size. They're all 28 different. Uh, cut them out, put them on a central spine. I spent eight hours in front of the buffer, buffing each one of them. Holy uh, smokes! And uh, the top, the top bar is uh, is kind of special. It's it's wider. Oh bigger, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice finish and then is this going to end up being body color too? I yes, guess, sir. Yeah, okay. Everything will be body color. Cool. And so that's you can see where the yeah, yeah you see where the extension is. So you go buy this kit and then you start cutting up all all over it, doing what you know. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of you get the body and the hood and the grill shell from from Rat. Right. Uh, of course, the hood sides are metal. They don't come with it. You gotta. You made uh, those make too. Those. Yeah. Well, and what's that laying on the floor there? Oh, before I shut the hood. Yeah, sure. Show me what you got. Yeah. Most most cars with a fiberglass hood, they just you kind of smooth over the fiberglass as best you can and paint it. Right. Well, I made an aluminum liner that fits inside, so okay. it'll be really smooth. Smooth. Yeah. After I, after you paint it. Slick is what they like Slick. to say. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a side vent, kind of a. Side treatment that's going to be recessed into the hood side. And that'll be chrome or it'll be body color? It's going to be body color as well. And then what colors are you going to use? It's going to be black on top, black top, or excuse me, black to the belt line. Okay. A black canvas top and then charcoal below the belt line with a small stainless trim down the belt line to separate the two colors. And that's not going to be a decal, it's actually going to be stainless steel you're going to wrap yes, around sir. there. Mm -hmm. And how will you attach it? Um, will you use screws? Two ways you can screw from the back side, but Today's adhesive thin tape is so good. You know, right. A lot of OEM. Yeah, yeah, everything's Emblems taped together. Tape Either that or Velcro. Yeah, yeah right. I think I'm going to do that because it's thin and it's, it's pretty permanent when it, comes, when it gets on the car. Wow. Cool. How long have you been working on this one? Um, about 18 months, maybe two years. How much longer do you think you got? I'm going to have it finished by next summer, by the okay. show season next summer. And then you build a special rear end for it, too. Yes, Let's sir. take a look at that. And I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a different kind of uh, gearhead, if you will. Right. I like to take OEM stuff. Right. And make them make it street rod and make it custom where you can't tell what it was. Right. This this differential, pardon what it's sitting on. This differential came out came out of a, a Nissan Armada. That's a big sport utility. Right. Okay. But I'm turning it into inboard disc brakes. Okay. And That's cool too. I love inboard disc brakes. That's neat. And I've made a, a custom cover for it to match the grill yeah to match the grill it's the same material as the grill so you can picture that hanging up underneath the, yes, the can car picture that hanging up underneath and uh, the cal these are the caliper mounts here so the calipers go right there for the inboard brakes wow. and then uh, since it's going to be independent rear suspension it's a five link if you can imagine there'll be a link going out this way to the rear to the one wheel and the right. one coming out the other way right of the well, surely you've been around this stuff all your life. Well, no, I just kind of started out messing around with cars when I was a kid. Fifteen, I think I bought my first 62 Volkswagen. Uh, I started tinkering with E-Type Jags about 20 years ago and restored a few of those. I've still got yeah. one laying over here. I see that. Um, now, what are, what's going to power this one? Oh, funny you yeah, we Yeah, funny you should ask because we want to know what's going to power this one. Well, don't tell anybody, but it's going to be another Nissan motor. <laughs> Except this one is out of the Titan truck. It's the 5.6 liter V8 double overhead cam, four valves per cylinder. Uh, it's gobs of torque, like 375 foot-pounds of torque. And when I get through with it, tweaking it, it should be close to 400 horsepower. Wow. Um, made my own tubular headers. Actually, I took, a, I took a set of late model Mustang headers and hacked them off. Because the, the spread of the, the bore of the head was almost identical to the Mustang head. Right. And so I made my own little end pieces to match the, 
the, the ports on the head, and I got instant headers. Holy smokes. You want something else yeah. different? Mr. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Nissan's never made a manual transmission Titan truck. They're all five-speed automatics. So oh, I never would have guessed. But I think Hot Rod's supposed to have three pedals. That's right, just me. right. So, see this plate right here on the back of it? Yeah. This ring? Yeah. That's a half-inch uh, high-tensile high strength aluminum adapter plate. It allows me to put this six-speed gearbox also out of a Nissan product. It's out of the Xterra. So, right, it bolts right onto it. Well, Jack, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you that Nissan probably should be you should be paying for at least half this hot rod. I mean, you work for Nissan, and folks, that's gonna be a question. Why why all the Nissan stuff? Jack works for Nissan, so he's part, proud of his product, and, and for good reason. Nissan makes a good product. Um, but how cool is it that uh, that you know he's taking it and putting it in an American hot rod? I I, I really I give you a lot of respect for that, a lot of props for that, because I mean, um, nobody does that, you know. And to be honest with you, somebody that's as into imports as much as you obviously, Jaguar, Nissan, are usually isn't into the American hot rod, you know? Jack, you're an amazing man, brother. Yeah. No, truly. I mean, you know. I know you. Just a gear ahead with a little too much time on his hands. Yeah, well, see, that's the other thing, folks, you don't understand. He doesn't have a lot of time on his hands either. He's just joking about that, too. He's talking smack there, too, because the man works out of town all week. He's pulling all this stuff off on working a day and a half, about a day and a half while you're at home. Yeah. While you're out on the road, do you say you take parts with you and work with him on the... Full parts, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like that, uh, that hood side uh, treatment, I made that while I was in at Nashville working my real job. Yeah, wow. Well, Jack, it's going to be a cool, cool hot rod. And hopefully Holcomb's going to do the interior for you. Who else? Yeah, I agree with you. Because I, I know. He's, I hear he's the tops and tops. Buddy, if you hear it from me, I'm telling you he's the tops of tops. Yeah. So, and people that, that tune into my channel all the time, they know that uh, I'm a big fan of Steve because he does great work, you know. Yes. He's the one that did the interior on your other car. car. Yes, sir. So if there is a wait, he's worth the wait, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, folks, there you go. Um, like I say, to all you people out there that uh, like I say would love to have a hot rod and you make excuses up and down why you can't have one I don't have a big shop this that and the other thing all it takes is desire Jack yes sir you know I mean that's a the thing imagination, a little vision. yeah yeah and I mean um, because Jack's not an engineer it would seem like he is but he's not anything hey, else don't, don't be don't be afraid to try something if you don't like the way that it, it hit the first don't, don't like the way it came out the first time right Cut it out and do it again. Right. Don't be afraid to redo it until you're happy with it. Right. Can't tell you how many wells I've cut off. Yeah. To do it again. I, I, you know, I've been around this stuff all my life. There's no way I would tackle a project like this. I admire you for, like I say, going after what you want. Well, thanks, Scott. You know? I just appreciate you coming out and spending some time. I don't have too many gearhead friends to get to show my right? my stuff with. So. Well, brother, I'm getting ready to show the whole world for you. So they won't they won't necessarily be your friend, but I promise you they'll admire your product when it's thanks done. Thanks a lot. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Folks, there you go. We're out. Uh, we're going to follow this one all the way through, like I said. You know, we'll, we see it when it's on jack stands now, but there's going to be a day we're going to see it, see, it on the, uh, see it on the ground. And uh, I know Jack well enough to know that he'll give me a ride in this thing when it's done. We'll be able to do a ride video on it. So I'm really excited about it. Hope you all have enjoyed it. Have a good day. See ya.